Hello, I'm Bob Gaswich from Dublin Drum High School in Dublin, Ohio. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about our counter tray, which is our base run game. Um, so why the counter tray? Uh, honestly, it's preference, right? You get a lot of guys who want to sit there and argue about gap scheme versus zone scheme. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Uh, we run counter tray because I'm more comfortable with the gap scheme. Uh, firmly believe we need something to hang our hat on when everything's going sideways. Uh, what are our kids going to believe in? What are our kids going to trust? Whether it's a good look, bad look, doesn't matter. And we've decided that counter tray is that. We believe it's an aggressive play. Um, the community that we come from is not a traditional football community. So one of the things that we needed to do was make our kids a little bit more aggressive. And, and we thought gap scheme did that for us. Uh, we also believe that it creates a lot of carryover with the rest of our scheme. So we run power, we run uh, trap, and even our pin and pull scheme, which uh, some will call outside zone. But there's a lot of carryover in the, in the scheme and in the um, drills and skills that we need to do. Uh, we believe we get more people at the point of attack. Um, also, movement works both ways. And what I mean by that is uh, defensively, we're a movement-based defense. We're going to blitz, we're going to slant, we're going to move around. Uh, try and confuse the other team. But I believe that that works both ways. Uh, if you look at some of the best screen teams in the country, guys running jailbreak and things like that, very rarely are their offensive linemen actually touching someone or getting a picture-perfect block. A lot of times they just get in the way. Uh, and that's what we're looking at with our counter tray. We're, we're not typically blessed with the biggest kids like a lot of uh, people watching this right now. So we want our guys to get in the way and create a seam for our running back. And then lastly, we believe it's a very versatile scheme for us. There's a lot that we can do. There's a lot that we can build off of. So that's the why as to why we uh, choose to day one install counter tray and base our program off of it. So with the versatility, what do I mean by that? One, uh, we're traditionally a shotgun team. Uh, it's just the personnel that we have. I firmly believe you find five offensive linemen, a quarterback, and take your next best five to ten players. And where we've been at the past five years, uh, those next best five have been a running back and, and four wide receivers, two running backs, three wide receivers. Uh, a lot of times our best tight ends have to go and move in and play tackle for us. Uh, so what this does is it gives us an opportunity to read defensive ends, read linebackers, do things like that. Uh, we have the ability to change the ball carry. Obviously, we can make it the quarterback. We can make it the running back. Uh, we can make it a jet sweeper. Uh, there are a lot of different things that we can do with that. Um, formations change, but nearly nothing changes to the offense. If we get under center, we run two back. Uh, we're really only changing the fullback and the quarterback steps. Everyone else is the same. If we're in a two tight set, if we're in an H back set, whatever it is, it stays the same for the five guys up front and for our running back. Um, the versatility of it, steal everything. You see it, you like it, take it. So we feel like we can adapt a lot of things from the zone uh, and, and apply it to what we're doing with the counter tray. Um, if you watch Oklahoma under Lincoln Riley, they make a living off of counter tray from, from gun. Uh, they do a lot of really good stuff that, uh, you know, in the off season we draw up and half of it, I forget to install in camp, uh, but it's, it's really, really good. And then also with the pull, it creates a hard play action. Uh, really gets the uh, linebackers flowing downhill. And if you have teams that are that have their safeties reading guards, now they're coming downhill as well. Uh, and we see a lot of quarters coverage. So a lot of times we can get those guys and get a one-on-one -on -one with the post over top. So we think it's a very versatile scheme for us. Um, so the how, right? We talked about the why, the what, all that good stuff. Here's the how. Um, our offensive line really only needs to work a handful of things obviously needs to work their their double teams. Uh, we're getting hip to hip. We're driving there. Um, down blocks or back blocks. So for our tackles, our guards, and our center, it's a lot of the same mechanics there. And then our pulls. Okay, So we have two major pulls. We have pull wall and pull kick. Our pull kick has, uh, has crossover to our trap concept. Our pull wall, uh, which is where we're pulling through and we're leading on a linebacker, has a lot of carryover into our pin and pull scheme where our guards or our attack will be pulling out into space um, and obviously on power as well. Now, here's where we differ a little bit from some other people. Um, you know, a lot of guys, hey, are you a skip pull team? Are you this? Are you that? We teach them two or three different ways to do it. And at the end of the day, whatever works best for them, we let them run it. 
Okay, as long as they can get the job done. Uh, we don't even get crazy about a right-handed stance, left-handed stance. We teach them the way that we think it should be done. But at the end of the day, whatever it gets it done, gets it done. Um, they have to run the play. I don't have to run the play. My playing days are long, long over, and they're very average when they existed. Um, so I'm going to give these guys tools, and I'm going to let them do it. Okay, um, But we spend a lot of time on double teams, uh, and our pull, pull schemes because it just has so much carryover to everything that we do. Um, our running back, the hardest part with our running back is being patient. We want this to be a downhill play. We don't want to bounce this play. Uh, we'll show some clips here where we do bounce it, but they're following the tackle, okay? Uh, the thing that I like to tell our running back is if our tackle can fit in that hole, so can you, right? We're kicking out that defensive end. If you feel the need to sprint around him, but we've got an offensive lineman fitting in that hole and you're a 160 pound, uh, uh, pretty boy there. You can fit in that hole too. So you got to go our quarterback on reads. Um, I was fortunate my first couple of years as a coach, I coached in an option based offense. And with the exception of midline, we had a rule and that rule was give unless, um, that's exactly what we do on our counter tray. When we read it, it is give unless. Okay. Um, so that's, that's what we teach them from day one. There are certain tags where they become the running back. Uh, when we do our mesh drill, we always do it with a read uh, so that our quarterbacks get used to it, okay? Um, and then just another general rule, uh, when in doubt, let the back ball out, right? When in doubt, let the back ball out. So I don't know what that defense man's doing. Great, give it. Who cares? Uh, it's, it's probably not the most politically correct statement, but most programs usually only have one or two run or quarterbacks, you have a line of kids who think that they can be running backs. Okay, protect yourself, man. Be smart about it. When our quarterback does pull the ball, okay, we talk to him about the three downs. Touchdown, first down, get down. Okay, we don't need someone to be a hero there. And we'll actually see a clip here where our quarterback, he's a, he's a pretty good kid, uh, but sometimes he plays a position like a linebacker and we have discussions. You don't have to try and truck guys. Okay, if you can score a touchdown, score a touchdown. If you can get a first down, get a first down. If you can't, and there are three guys in your way, get down, especially if it's first, second, third down. Uh, we're, we're very apt to go for it on fourth, so we know that we have another down to go there. Um, our rules, very, very simple. We like to keep things as simple as humanly possible, and this is where there's going to be some carryover to some other schemes. Uh, right? We look like a spread on TV, but our play side tackle, our play side guard, it's gap down double backer. Okay, gap down, double back, gap down, double back. I will say it a million times in practice. We miss someone, someone gets on our path and we don't get them. Gap down, double back. Don't overthink it. Well, coach, what if this guy's outside of me? This guy's head up. This guy's inside. What are your rules? Gap down, double back. One, I've never seen a defense line three guys up on a tackle or a guard. Uh, but two, takes care of everything. Just trust your rules and we'll take care of everything else. Our center is a back lock. Uh, there are rare opportunities where we will double team with our center. If we see a special nose or there's something else that we're trying to do, our backside guard, pull kick. So pull right, hit right, right? So I'm pulling to the right. I'm going to try and get my right shoulder on the inside of that defensive end. Our backside tackle is pull wall. Now, like I said, I prefer the skip pull because I believe we can see things that also get us out of the trash, uh, some penetration, things like that. Ideally, our tackle is tracking that back inside linebacker, or that I'm sorry, the play side inside linebacker, and he's going to hit him inside out. Now, in real life, we're going to pull through, and if we get any piece of that guy, we're in great shape. Um, one thing that I left out about our play side tackle, it may game, or we may game plan that if need be. That could be because of the defense that we're seeing. Uh, we see a lot of four eyes now. Um, so we'll, we'll game plan a couple things there. It may also be because we think we can do some different things, or maybe this is a team that's bringing a lot of outside pressure. So we anticipate a slant. So we may tell him you're taking the defensive end. I think we have one or two, uh, clips on the huddle highlights. We're going to watch here where he takes an awkward step or say we're running a counter trade to the right, our right tackle will actually step outside first like he's reaching and try and influence that guy inside. Um, there's, there's a rhyme and a reason to that. If we have an H-back in the game, 
We're going to tag him and tell him what to do. He's either going to arc the defensive end so that we can read him, or he's going to scoop and cut him off. Okay, if, if we actually tag it, H counter, he's going to be the guy that's going to pull a wall and he's going to take the place of the tackle. Uh, if we have a fullback in, his general rule is he's going to cut off that backside defensive end. Um, I was watching some all 22, watch the San Francisco 49ers actually leave their black backside tackle. Uh, fullback took a couple of false steps to the opposite side, and then he was the pull wall guy. Um, I don't know. We'll try it in camp but I think that might be one of those things that looks really, really awesome when you're sitting here in the off season uh, may not actually apply in the high school. Now our tight end, he's, he's a game plan deal. If he's backside, his rules are to scoop to the linebacker, to the safety. Okay. Um, if he's play side, we'll either down block him and he'll have gap down double backer, or we'll tell him that whole week, Hey, you're just releasing this linebacker. And we've got clips of both of those. So our rules are pretty, pretty easy. Um, they don't change based on the front. Okay. They don't change based on, uh, who the guy is. Uh, we just try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, if we were to go to our power, we talked about, Hey, these are, uh, a lot of carryover, right? Our play side tackle, play side guard center, all still the same guys. Only two people that change are our backside guard and backside tackle Our backside tackle pull walls. Uh, I'm sorry, our backside guard pull walls and our backside tackle cuts off. So we try to keep it as, uh, as consistent as possible. So issues and answers. Uh, we've been at Jerome for five years, and for five years, counter trade has been our number one run play. Okay, So we've seen a lot of different defensive adjustments to it. Number one is the hard squeeze. Okay, That defensive end just crashes really hard. There are some teams out there that teach their defensive ends to cut the puller. Uh, completely illegal, but it's not illegal and, until, uh, until a ref calls it. And, and sometimes those guys don't call it, okay? What are we going to do? We don't waste time telling our guard, hey, now you've got to work your hips around and get around that guy. If he's squeezing hard enough and there's a collision between our guard and that defensive end, we'll take the stalemate and take that defensive end out of the play. It's now up to our tackle to make the play work, okay? We've got to trust our tackles. Uh, in, in our scheme, um, we put our bigger – uh, stronger guys in at guard. We put our more athletic guys at tackle, um, and we can usually get away with a guy at center. So we trust that our tackles are our best athletes up front. So if there's all trash there, you're going to pull around that, and we'll watch some some of those clips. And that's when our running back actually uh, winds up cutting those things to the out or bouncing those things to the outside. Pinch scrape, coach. You're reading that defensive end right? Uh, people who play against zone, well, hey, we're going to pinch scrape. We're going to come over. Not worried about it. Um, we usually run this out of a three-by-one set when we're in shotgun. Our number three wide receiver should be taking care of that linebacker. Um, if not, say they go three over three and somehow they still have guys on the inside, we shouldn't be running it anyways. We should be thrown. We should be going to the outside. We should be doing something else. Um, four eyes have become a real problem. Uh, some people play them really, really well. And, and like anything else in football, those guys, really, really difficult. So we'll game plan those guys. Uh, we'll see how that four eyes playing. Is he attacking the tackle? Or is he one of those teams where, hey, we're going to get our hands on the tackle, but we're going to read the guard? Um, which, if that's the case, I want to play you because I think you're putting your defensive end in a bad position. Um, we'll arc that guy. And we'll make that defensive end decide, am I going to widen or am I going to squeeze? We're going to give them a little bit of, uh, of indecision. What you'll see on most of these clips is with a four eye, we still choose to block down on that guy. And we're just going to pull wider. So we're going to kick out your outside backer that comes off the edge. Okay, um, A loaded box, what do we do versus a loaded box? Uh, sometimes I'm ignorant and we'll still run it. But that's where our play action comes in. Okay, you, we know that you're going to load it. We know that you're going to flow hard. Um, our league championship game this year, we knew the defense that we were playing. We knew that they were going to come hard off of any movement. Our very first play uh, was our play action off of this. And then what do you do if they have dudes? Uh, that's a problem with any scheme, right? First answer that we have is we're going to read them. We're going to try and read that guy. If it's a defensive end, makes it easy. There's some ways that we can read the defensive tackle in the scheme. It's, it's a little bit trickier. Uh, but we can do that. If it's a linebacker or a safety, we'll do some window dressing out there with some quick screens or quick passes. 
while we're still running the uh, run concept and we'll try and read that guy. Um, second thing, decide if you want to run at or away from them. Um, we've, we've had the misfortune of playing two defensive ends that were both five-star guys. One, we wanted to run right at the other one. We wanted to run away from, um, it just depends on who they are as a guy, right? Are they a great athlete that's coming off that edge, but they're not exactly physical Then go at them, see if they want to get hit all game long. If it doesn't matter and they're a grown man and they're going to throw your guard back in, well, let's run away from them. Uh, trick the eyes, use some motion, uh, use some window dressing, put some other guys right in front of them. Just kind of see what happens. Uh, and then none of that works. Uh, I don't know. I guess you got to pray. They won the genetic lottery and you didn't. You got to figure something else out. Uh, so those are the issues that we see the majority of the time that give us problems and uh, how we try to address those. Okay, so here are going to be my super official drawings here. And I apologize, guys. I didn't draw up the defenses because our rules don't change. Gap down, double backer, gap down, double backer. So on the left-hand side here of your screen, uh, you're going to see us in our pro set, right? At full back, tight end. Now, what we usually see to our pro set is a three and either a seven or a nine. If we see a three and a nine, we're, we're running counter tray all day. Uh, we're going to have fun with it. So we're going to double down on that three technique to the backside inside backer, and we're going to release our tight end to your uh, middle backer. Okay, if we see any kind of a one and a five, that's where we start to game plan. Uh, we may have the tackle and the tight end double that guy to the backside backer, or we may just release, and we'll have our tight end release as well. We'll kick your, uh, we'll kick your five, and anyone that you have outside of that tight end, we're hoping that we're hitting inside of it. Um, to the wide receivers, I have safety or corner written up there. High school's a, a little bit different than other levels. Um, you've got to figure out who's the better run player. Okay, and usually it's the safety. Okay, usually the corners, uh, depending on who you're playing, you have one that's just a good, solid high school football player, and then you have one that's more of a uh, seven on seven player. If it's a seven on seven player, go straight to the safety. Make that guy make a decision and make the tackle. Okay. Uh, over on the right-hand side is what we typically actually run our play out of, okay? So it's going to be the same exact concept. Uh, our three wide receivers to the play side, they're going to block one, two, three, unless they are tagged with a screen. Um, we don't typically like to RPO this. Uh, we think it takes away from the aggressiveness of our offensive line. So while that's a nice little wrinkle that guys are getting a lot of yardage out of, we're going to purposely pass that up. We're going to take the trade off. Okay, so our quarterback's going to read your defensive end. Um, and again, his rules are give unless. Now, if we have a problem with the overhang to the single side receiver side, we will throw a now screen um, or we'll get into doubles. And we'll just go two by two and we'll make you make a decision on how you want to play that. Okay, uh, so that's our base counter tray. That's how we're going to run that. And that'll be the first couple of clips our change-ups to the counter tray. So if you look on the top left-hand corner, this is what we call switch. So we'll have two backs in the game, okay? Um, and they're going to run a sweep to the left while the offensive line runs counter tray to the right. Quarterback still reads the defensive end, except now because of the switch call, he's going to be the inside runner, whereas the running backs are going to be the outside runners, and they're going to run sweep. We should have an overhang accounted for, um, in theory, the pull of the lineman is going to keep the inside linebackers honest. There shouldn't be a scrape over top there. Um, if there is a pinch scrape, good for you. You win. Uh, you win that play. We lose. I'm terrible. Uh, the dad in the top row of the stands screaming that I make all the wrong calls is absolutely right. Okay. Uh, jet switch. We got a lot of mileage out of this when I was in Nashville. Okay. So we're going to run jet sweep. We're still going to read that play side defensive end. Um, if he widens or pauses at all with that sweep motion, our quarterback's going to keep it and run it back the other way. Okay. If he squeezes or the quarterback's in doubt, the rule is still give. So he's going to give. Uh, and below that, we just have jet. Now, the problem with jet, you're going to run into two issues. One, timing with your jet sweeper and your running back. Okay. Quarterback's still reading the defensive end. If that defensive end widens, he's going to give it back to that running back coming inside. Um, if that defensive end 
does anything else, right, he's going to hand it to the sweeper. So there are two issues that you're going to have, and we've actually kind of gotten away from this, and we go jet switch instead of just jet. Um, or if we run jet, we tell the quarterback it's going to be a gift to the running back the whole time, and that's that's a token flash to the jet guy, um, is that you don't have anyone for that safety that's filling downhill. And if you play some good safeties, those guys are making that play at the line. Other side, uh, we have arrow. Right. This has been kind of popularized by some teams. Um, you know, we, we played around with it a little bit. What we actually found is when we call arrow, it turns into a give almost every time. So you have that H back splitting the tackle, uh, splitting him in half. That defensive end sees an outward motion from that H back. His rules are to read the tackle, but he's 16, 17 years old. He sees all that movement ahead of him. He's going to widen. And you wind up giving it to the running back nine times out of 10, which we are a okay with, um, you know, usually that running back's a better athlete than our H back is, um, H H counter. Uh, we have a clip in here where we're running it from an actual tight end look. Uh, so if you think of, um, you know, I'm going to screw up the name of this, but in wing T systems where they pull the guard and the tight end, basically the same exact concept. Okay, so when we run uh, our H counter, we usually take a quick screen to the outside with it, uh, but we're pulling that guy. Why would we do that? Uh, maybe it's a four eye on both sides, and we're having a lot of trouble with that backside four eye getting in the hip of the puller. So we're going to keep our tackle on it. All right, and then the last one is a triple. Uh, we have yet to run this in a game, but we run it with our backup quarterbacks in practice because usually those guys are better athletes. Uh, you know, that's, Hey, we've got one or two quarterbacks and then we're going to take the best athlete that we have on the team. And if, uh, the old crap button hits, we're going to run triple with that guy. Um, so it's, it's actually been pretty solid for us. Uh, you know, so good that I don't call it in a game. Maybe we'll have to do that week one. All right. And then our passes, uh, to the left-hand side, we've got two different versions of naked ones from under center, right? Just think of your normal boot. The only difference is, is we're pulling both the guard and the tackle. You have to beat into your quarterback psyche. If you can run the ball to where you're throwing it, run the ball to where you're throwing it. Um, out of the three by one set, it's just a normal flood. And then we've got screen. All right. So our counter tray here, two by two set. We're going to run counter tray to the right. Okay. Looks over, sees my ugly mug signaling it in. Okay, we've got our puller. He's going to kick. Okay, we've got good movement here. And our tackle actually makes a really good play and a really good choice. Okay, um, I do like the effort from our wide receivers. Okay, this slot much better than this guy getting his body position in there. Look, if we get into the secondary, we're in good shape anyways. So watching it from the angle that actually helps. All right, we got a five-man box. Of course, we're going to check run here. This defensive tackle actually does a really good job of creating a pile here, um, of preventing our tackle from getting anywhere else on the second level. We actually get decent movement, okay? Just enough of a kick. Again, if your tackle can get through, you better be able to get through. So Adam sticks there, uh, fulls our end zone camera girl, and she kind of screws up. Um, but there we go. That's a solid gainer for us. Okay, same team. We're going to run it again. Coach, what do you do if someone runs upfield? Nothing. This guy is taking himself out of the play. When we watch the end zone angle, you'll see he doesn't even factor in, and our guard doesn't touch him. Um, I would have liked for our slot to take a flatter path here to cut this guy off. But at the end of the day, we've got our play side tackle on the mic. We've got a slot and another tackle on the overhang. Okay. We've got a good football play. First and 15. We'll take that. Okay. I prefer not to be in first and 15, but life happens. So here we go. We're pulling. Right. Good job by our tackle. Running back does a phenomenal job of running into people's backs. Um, look at this. Even our uh, wide receiver over here is getting a pancake. It's contagious. Okay. That's good. You feel good about that. From under center, OK, 
okay? The ta her tight end actually does a god-awful job here, doesn't help us out at all. I do like the path that our running back takes. Secondary guys are secondary guys for a reason. He doesn't want anything to do with that. Okay, this is a little bit better. We'll see our, ta our tight end arc get to a linebacker here. Okay, we'll have a nice tight pull here. Our fullback does a much better job. Um, our running back could do a far better job here of getting. It's not even a good counter step, but it winds up working. Okay, and anytime we can run a play and get seven yards, eight yards on it, that's that's a heck of a play. Okay. Now, Coach, you said you read it every time. Absolutely. Okay. Give on less. Okay. Give on less. This guy's screaming downhill here. We'll look at two things from the end zone copy. Ryan decides, yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to pull. Unfortunately, uh, Ryan doesn't have Lamar Jackson speed. Otherwise, this would have been six. So when we watch it from the end zone, Okay, they're going to check. I like when the defense looks over like they know what I'm talking about. So that's good. Now, first of all, don't even watch the quarterback pull. Let's watch the play side. He does a good job of squeezing our tackle. Okay, gets our tackle completely off. Our guard has to wind up collisioning. Our tackle makes us right here. So if we see this, he squeezes hard. Our pulling guard gets hung up on him. Our tackle actually does a good job of carrying out, and our running back does a good job of following him. Now let's watch what the actual play is. Watch this defensive end. Here's going to be his hard squeeze. Okay, Ryan's good enough athlete to get outside of that. I might be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, now what I don't like, you love the competitor in Ryan. Okay, right here, he's got the first down. He's not scoring a touchdown. I don't like that we're turning back into this guy and trying to lower the boom on him. Our defensive line coach is a pud. He loves it. Uh, but he also thinks that anyone can play quarterback. So there we go. That's uh, all right. Just motion, get them to rotate. Here's a four I. Here's some things that we do to a four I. Okay. Let's see if we have, all right, good. We have the end zone copy of this one. Okay, so our four eye, we just decided we were going to wash this cat. We're going to kick this outside guy. Now, it should protect these inside linebackers. He comes tight. Our tackle makes a good play. For whatever reason, this inside, backside, inside linebacker should make that play, and he doesn't. And our running back makes a great job of cutting off of that. Okay? Um, I do like the effort that our wide receivers give us. Right, they give us an opportunity there. Another four I team down here. This is the one where I was saying you're going to see Nate take some awkward steps. He's going to kind of step to the outside first and just wall that guy off. We decided that we liked our chances on the outside instead of arcing that guy. Refs didn't call that a touchdown. Um, that didn't make me happy. All right, we know he's coming off. We know there's going to be a squeeze here. Now, it winds up working, but we don't do a very good job on the perimeter block in here. Okay. What I do love, watch number 10's effort. He doesn't do a great job, but the fact that he's 25 yards downfield blocking. Okay. Goal line. We got man coverage, and they're going to bring a blitz. Okay. So all we should be able to do or have to do is get a piece of two guys. One, two. Good. This is the uh, fourth overtime of this game, so we'll take that. Q counter. Okay. The one thing that we tell our guys on Q counter is we tell the running back, don't worry about a fake. What happens if Zach sticks this out, Ryan's going to hit that ball. Okay. Running back, see ball, take ball. He's going to run, and he's going to clip that. So we tell the quarterback, you keep that tight to your stomach. There's going to be a good enough proximity fake in there. We get a good enough block up front. Um, and then Zach was a good athlete our first year here. Again, good effort from our wide receivers there. 
I like that. Another Q counter. This is a backup kid. We just wanted to get him the carry. You know, his senior year, let's get him some ball. Uh, he ran it hard between the tackles. Okay. Under center. Now, let's watch this from the end zone copy. This is going to be a little bit more useful. This is when I was a much smarter coach when I was an assistant at Marion Local. Okay. Uh, we're going to kick out over here. This defensive end is going to squeeze really hard. I want you to watch the tackle make his decision, okay? Blows our guard up. The tackle's a good enough athlete to carry it outside. Running back's smart enough to trust him. Outside receiver's going to block the safety. Now, all of a sudden, I'm a corner. Corner's got to make a life decision here, okay? He's got to make a career choice. He chooses to take on that puller, and it doesn't wind up good for him. Okay, so you got to trust your tackles. Okay, everything disappears. Coach, what do I do if everything disappears? And this is the worst coaching point ever, be an athlete. Okay, so our guard, Jay, pulls up, and now we just have two linemen pulling down field, and we'll take that. Okay, uh, I want to get to, all right, here's our H counter. This is from a tight end set. So he's going to stay. Guard's still going to pull. Tight end's going to pull. Now the tight end gets caught up. He needs to go downfield. Uh, Would have given us a better look there. But he helped us out anyways. Wide receivers don't get in the way. All right. This is our bootleg. Okay. Out of three by one. Everything's going to look the same up front. Um, so they got trigger, trigger. They trigger hard on this guy. We want to slow everything else up, and it's just flood to the outside. Ryan doesn't set his feet, so we wind up a little bit short of the sticks here. Um, winds up hurting us on the first drive, but it does slow them up a little bit. Our screen, okay? We're going to block it just like counter on the front side. Guard's going to pull. Our tackle's supposed to step in for two steps, like he's pulling and then release to the outside. Token flash. And then we've got to get that ball out. And everyone's going. The thread of the counter tray holds those linebackers long enough for us to get some positive yardage back. Okay. Uh, and then I believe this is the last clip. This is going to be our boot and our counter. Why did we call this? Loaded box. And watch how hard this defensive end squeezes. Doc has all day to throw this pass. This team was pretty darn good. Uh, so you don't want to give him all day. Okay. So he has a chance to get to that backside drag. I'm watching it from the end zone copy. We're going to pull. He squeezes. He's a non-factor. have no one filling off at the edge. If you can run it to where you can throw it, do it. Okay. Got someone coming over here. He knows everything's vacated. He has all day. That was also one of our best players that he throws it to. So that helps a little bit. Okay. And Marion Local's a different beast. Look at all these people. So that's our counter tray. Um, I appreciate the time. If you guys have any questions, uh, guess which underscore Bob at DublinSchools.net. And I will answer anything and everything. I'll give you all of our film. I'll give you good film. I'll give you bad film. Greatly appreciate it.